Okay, I had somebody ask me about backstop. Oh, this was designed. Okay, what it is, I bet railroad ties, and these are the old oak ones, into the ground, and had railroad ties piled behind them, and then sand dumped into the back of it. In fact, it's moved the sand down from fire, and that two of my top ones have fallen down, so I'll have to put them up again. But how it works, you know, I've got this, this OSB on the front that I put the target to, because that's easy to staple to, and it works better than if you're using something like plywood, what happens is when a bullet hits it, the splinters will tear out even coming back. So it's nice to use this OSB is good because it tears right through them. And I have found a lot of times if you're using gas tech bullets, this first layer of OSB takes the gas tech off. And I'll find them laying or laying between because what it is, there's this one and I will have to change this out the spring now because this one holds the target and like I say usually you strip the gas checks off and OSB is cheap you know a sheet of OSB if I go two by two I can replace my whole target like four times on one raggedy sheet of OSB but this piece is nailed on here and I'll pull this off so I can show you behind the railroad ties there's another piece of USB though no, or OSB but you can see that's kind of in shambles but all that's supposed to do is to hold the sand from coming and it's not nailed on or anything that's just the weight of the sand holds it so as I'm shooting eventually the sand runs down here bringing down a lot of bullets with it you know, I find a lot of them just laying here. Like here's one of the steel core from a Mosin. Um, and that's what's tough on your backstop are those steel cord bullets. Uh, they just chew them oak ties right up. But this way it buries them in the sand. Like I say, then the sand filters back down and I can sort the bullets out. And then I'll just, now the spring when it thaws, I'll just pull that OSB piece out, slip a new one in, replace this one on the front, and then take my loader and dump the sand back over the top again, then I'll be good for at least a year. So I think it was a year ago that I redid this. You know, and usually, you know, you're hitting in the same pretty much general area. So even after you get this burrowed out, you still got places to staple to. But it gets to be a point where you just have to replace it. But I find that works good because I can recover a, just a heck of a lot of lead. And even after a lot of the sand has dropped down, you know, it still continues to fun. You'd have to shoot 10 feet high before it wouldn't work. But I like it kind of in a way when the sand gets to the point where it's not covering up this hole anymore. Because then from back at the 100 yards, I can see when I make a hit, if it's in this box, It'll shoot a spout of stand straight up in the air. You know, it's kind of a telltale. I always wanted to take and put some kind of a, a steel ringer from one of the greater blades back there too that lines up in about the center of the target for a sound deal. But this works pretty well because before I was using this, I just had railroad ties and had, and like I said, them steel cord just chewed them railroad ties up. But this works good. Or I just, like I said, I'll have to redo it this spring. But I gotta wait till it's thawed. And then I'll pull some more of that sand down, dig the bullets out of it, and then throw it back over with a loader. And I can drive right in here and dump it. But simple, safe, you know, and you got a good one foot square area or over a foot that you will be able to recover the bullets from and you know hopefully you're shooting within that that area.